Welcome to HCC TV. My name is Josh. And my name is James. And we're here to bring you news of heroes so from all over the world each and every week and hope to inspire you to become an everyday hero yourself. We start with this week's hero news. Uh, CNN is once again doing their Hero of the Year award, and we encourage you to go over to cnn.com slash heroes, where you can read all of their profiles and even vote on the hero that you think should win the award this year. Also, the Women Are Heroes Art Exhibition is happening in Paris, France right now, and images from that event are going out all over the world. It's also important to remember that this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and with some more information on that, as well as some heroes associated with it, we turn it over to James. As Josh said, this week marks the start of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this particular year, which is the 25th anniversary of the, the organization. The organization has successfully increased the awareness of the disease by handing out flyers, by raising money for research, and by increasing the opportunities for women to get checked. One of the most important roles, however, that it plays is increasing the dialogue between women to create discussions about the disease. The more dialogue and more conversations that happen, the more likely women are to go and get checked. Many extraordinary people have emerged with a perseverance and determination over the 25 years to fight breast cancer. On the blog right now, Josh created a post just the other day highlighting some of these people. Some examples are Morgan O'Neill, Shirley Brown and Nancy Brinker. Morgan O'Neill in her high school year began making and selling her own belts and donated all the proceeds to the Breast Cancer Research Fund. Shirley Brown was diagnosed with breast cancer but fought off the disease successfully and now helps other people fight the disease and helps them raise money to pay for the costs. Nancy Brinker set up the Susan G. Komen Foundation in honour of her sister who passed away after fighting breast cancer for many years. This organisation organises many events, including the Three Day Walk, one of the largest charity events in the world. This takes place each year. It's a three day walk for 60 miles, which many people take part in. Many ordinary people are doing everyday things to help fight this battle against cancer. To continue on this theme of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're now going to go to our next session called the Hero Profile. This week we're going to take a look at Breast Cancer Research Foundation creator, Evelyn Lauder. After working in teaching for many years, Evelyn Lauder began working for her mother-in-law's company. Throughout her career there, she held many charities through the Lauder Foundation, including setting up many play areas and parks throughout New York City for children. In 1992, along with her friend Alexandra Penny, she developed the pink ribbon, which is now the most famous symbol for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Lauder had always shown an interest in breast cancer research and raised over 18 million US dollars on her own, which helped set up the Memorial Sloan Kettering's Cancer Research Centre. This was the first diagnostic breast cancer research facility in the US. The pink ribbon that Lauder and her friend Alexandra Penny designed is now seen each October as it's given to all Estee Lauder cosmetic company shops across the US. This is given out along with breast cancer research information and how to self-check. In 1993, Lauder went one step further and she set up the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. This foundation since its inception has raised over 175 million US dollars. The BCRF is now one of America's largest independent research cancer charities. Although having won many philanthropy awards throughout her lifetime, Lauder's drive remains as strong as ever in her quest to fight breast cancer. Now back to Josh. With another segment that we'll be doing here on HCC TV, we're going to check in with my Doing Little Good Things project. Uh, for those of you who remember the video last week, the Doing Little Good Things project is where I make a conscious effort, at least once a day, to do a small good thing for someone else, much in the way that St. Teresa did with her little way. You can follow this project on Twitter at Little Good Thing, or you can check in with our regular blog posts on the Hero Construction Company blog page. This week I had a couple of interesting experiences, including getting yelled at by a parking meter attendant who didn't care for me putting quarters into other people's meters. I was also at a restaurant and uh, playing one of the claw machine games where you can win a stuffed animal and I won a little Halloween themed bear and I turned around and there was this little guy behind me and he was like, whoa. 
And he goes, now watch me play. So I stood behind him and I watched him play and he just missed winning this little ghost. And as he turned around, you could, he had hung his head down. He was looking at his toes and I said, well, here you go. And I handed him the bear that I had won. And he raised that bear up above his head and he ran back over to his table. And his mom kind of looked up at me and smiled as if to say, you know, thank you. Another experience that I had is that I walked into a nursing home to deliver some things and I overheard a man behind me telling one of the social workers that he just wanted someone to listen to him. So I turned around and I, I set my stuff down and I sat down and I said, well, what do you have to say? And uh, he started talking to me about how he used to be a business owner and he lived in the city of Detroit. And once he started getting sick, he had to sell his business and now he was in and out of the hospital. And because he doesn't have any family in Michigan, he, when he's not in the hospital, he's required to stay in the nursing home for some aftercare. He said that he was scheduled to get released pretty soon and he couldn't wait to go home and just see how long the grass on his lawn had gotten and get the mower out and, and be able to do some work. All in all, I probably sat and talked with him for about 10 minutes just about his life and his story and, and got up and went through with the rest of my day. It only took 10 minutes of my day to make a difference, hopefully make a difference, in that man's life. That's the kind of thing that I'm doing with this project. And like I said, you can follow it on Twitter, you can read those regular blog updates, and uh, I encourage you to do the same thing. Take some time out of your day to make the life of someone else just a little bit better. That's all this week from HCC TV. Uh, we encourage you to tune in next week when James and I will be out on the street and we'll be getting to know some people and finding out who their heroes are and why those people are their heroes. So check in with us next week, and good night from me. That's good night from him. My mind just goes blank. <laughs> okay. The organization has successfully increased awareness of the disease by handing out leaflets, raising Murray for... Murray. <laughs> <laughs> so ashamed. <laughs> mm. Okay. Many... <laughs> I always think so far ahead, I can't think about the present. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. Many external. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I won't do the videos each week. <laughs> It'll take so long. You're doing fine.